around I was lost, now I'm found Like a glimmer of hope That will never let me go You bring peace to my soul The world can never satisfy You've opened up my eyes to find hey, You give me technical Take you out with me on the way Caught in rhythms of grace I was afraid to let you know My deepest thoughts and quits I'm told But you know me more than I know God, I know you hold me close You search and find my heart between the lines 
My God isn't finished yet If he did it before, he can do it again So I'll trust him with what comes next Cause my hindsight says I can count on this My God isn't finished yet If he did it before, he can do it again So I'll trust him with what comes next For the God I know is known for faithfulness Yeah, my hindsight says I can trust him with what's next For the God I know is known for faithfulness Hi guys, welcome to Discoveryland. Today in the Big God story, the prophet Elijah had two unique encounters with God. In one encounter, God made a fire blaze from heaven. And in the second, he spoke gently to Elijah through the whispering wind. So through these two encounters, God showed that he is Yahweh, the most high God. Today we are going to hear about the pro prophet who came after Elijah and how God used him to show that he is the Lord of life. But first, let's pray. Dear God, thank you for today. Thank you for bringing us here to listen and learn more about you. Um, I pray that you just would open our ears and our minds so that we can just get to know you more. In Jesus' name, amen. So Elijah had a disciple named Elisha, who served Elijah in the same way that Joshua served Moses. Okay, for fun, every time I say Elijah and Elisha, let's really emphasize the J and the Sh. Can you do that with me? Great. Okay, so amazingly, when Elijah finished his ministry on earth, God took him up into the heaven in a whirlwind. Can you imagine your friend going up to heaven in a whirlwind? That would be amazing. <laughs> So when Elijah went up to heaven, he left his job of being a prophet to Elisha. Elisha's job um, as a prophet was to continue the work of Elijah, to warn the nation of Israel against worshiping false gods. So because Israel wasn't being faithful to the Lord, God, God called Elisha to remind him that he is God, the Lord of life. So during the time of Elisha, um, Israel was at constant war with the nation of Aram, a Gentile nation. Can you tell me what a Gentile is? Right, a Gentile is someone who wasn't a part of God's original, or God's original chosen people, the Israelites. So the commander of the army of Aram was a man named Naaman. He was a well-respected man and won many victories for his country. But unfortunately, he had leprosy. Do you know what leprosy is? Right, leprosy is a skin disease that can cover and eat away at the body. And back in Bible times, they didn't know how to cure it. So as you can imagine, Naaman was really trying to find a way to be healed. So Naaman's wife had a servant girl who had come from Israel. She believed in the Lord and talked to Naaman's wife. Let's open our Bibles to 2 Kings 5.3. She said to her mistress, if only my master would see the prophet who is in Samaria, he would cure him of his leprosy. Because of what the servant girl said, Naaman went to the king of Aram and asked if he might go to Israel. Let's read verses four through five. So Naaman went to his master and told him what the girl from Israel had said. By all means go, the king of Aram replied. I will send a letter to the king of Israel. So Naaman left, taking with him 10 talents of silver, 6,000 shackles of gold, and 10 sets of clothing. The king of Aram was desperate for his great commander to be cured and was even willing to ask his enemy for help to make this happen. So when the king of Israel received the letter from Aram, he got so upset that he tore his robes we think that's because the king of Israel knew he, ha he didn't have the power to cure Naaman. Only God, the Lord of life, could cure him. The king was also probably afraid that if he wasn't able to cure Naaman, 
Israel and Aram might go to war again. Elijah had much more faith that God would be able to heal Naaman. So Elijah said to the king in 2 Kings 5, 8, have the man come to me and he will know that there is a prophet in Israel. After Naaman left the king of Israel, he went straight to Elisha's home. There, Elisha did not, meet, did not greet Naaman, but he sent a messenger to tell him, go wash yourself seven times in the Jordan River and you will be cleansed. Naaman was furious. He had traveled a long way to meet Elisha and had expected Elijah himself would come and heal him. Naaman said, are not the rivers of Damascus better than any of the waters of Israel? Couldn't I wash in them and be cleansed? See, Naaman was expecting a big show from Elisha in order for him to be healed. Since Elisha didn't do that, Naaman left in rage. But because of one of Naaman's servants convincing him to wash and be cleansed, Naaman agreed to dip seven times in the Jordan River. So the leprosy covered and damaged Naaman's skin. But as he dip, dipped in the Jordan River, his diseased flesh, which had likely been covered in sores, was completely restored and made new, just like the skin of a child. You know how a baby's skin is like super soft? Well, that's what it was like when Naaman, after Naaman had dipped in the river, river seven times and was healed. God's healing of Naaman's leprous skin was because God is healer. He is the Lord of life. So after Naaman was healed, he went to Elijah and said in 2 Kings 5.15, Now I know that there is no God in all the world except in Israel. Through this declaration, Naaman showed that he wasn't, it wasn't just his body that had been transformed, but his heart had been transformed too. His healing had made him believe in Yahweh, the Most High God. Naaman received a new life physically and spiritually as he trusted in God. Through the healing of Naaman, God showed his people that he alone is the Lord of life. Naaman, a Gentile, was able to know God through his healing, the lesser healing of his body and the greater healing of his soul. And God still offers us true life today. And that's why he sent his son Jesus to live and die and rise again so that we might know him. When Jesus came to this earth, he said that he came so that we might have life to the full. He is the Lord of life and he offers us the fullest life that we could ever ask for. There is no other place in this world where we can receive life except through him. Our God is able to heal us in every way because he is the Lord of life. He cares about everything in our lives and he longs to give us full life through him where do you need god to give you life do you need physical healing for something or maybe there's someone in your life that might need healing or maybe you need god to lead you in an, in relationship with him so during this song take time to talk to god um, about being the lord of your life so you could just sit quietly and talk to him about giving you life or healing for you or someone that you may know during this song. By your spirit I will rise From the ashes of defeat The resurrected King Is resurrecting me In your name I come alive To declare your victory The
tomb where soldiers watched in vain was borrowed for three days his body there would not remain our god has robbed the Okay, now it's time for the blessing. So if you could hold out your hands like this as I say the blessing over you. May the Lord of life meet all of your needs. May your old ways be washed away and may you live the life God has for you in Christ. Bye guys.